Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is the Lenovo M75N Nano, or it's a Think Center M75N Nano, but I managed to catch it on the first try, so we're gonna keep that as the intro. Now, this system is one that we previously would have called a Project Tiny Mini Micro Node because that is our one liter PC series from Lenovo, HP, and Dell. And the big thing here is that when we previously did some of these units, we called them Project Tiny Mini Micro Nodes, but they're really not because they're like about a third of a liter. And so now we have our STH Mini PC series, and I think that's where we're probably gonna put this one. Although the other three units that we've looked at in this series have all gone in Project Tiny Mini Micro. So my game plan is basically, let's go take a look at this unit and let's talk about some of the things that are really good in it. There's also some things that I don't really like and we're gonna talk about those as well. And then I wanna talk about performance, power consumption, and of course, our key lessons learned because there are definitely some key lessons learned. But first, everybody likes to know price. And I'm gonna talk about what I got this unit for and some of the more current pricing trends because it's been over a year since I purchased this unit. So this unit I purchased back in 2021 for $300 and I got, I think for like $24 was like the tax and shipping on it or something like that. And so it was about say $325 or so. Now with that, I managed to get the Ryzen Pro or Ryzen 3 Pro series CPU, not the Ryzen 5. This has eight gigabytes of memory and also got a 128 gigabyte SSD. I did not get Windows 10 Pro or any other Microsoft OS. You're not gonna see like a Windows sticker on this because frankly, it didn't come with an operating system. And hey, I'm totally capable of putting Ubuntu on this because that's basically what we use in just about everything, including we just use it everywhere. If we're not using like Proxmox as a virtualization host, we tend to use Ubuntu just to go run apps. But at the same time, I do really like, especially in these PCs, having the Windows license because if you want to run Ubuntu, you can totally go do that. But if you ever want to go and you know you need to give someone a PC for whatever reason, just having the Windows license makes life really easy. You don't have to go hunt one down. It's already embedded in these PCs as an OEM license. And so I really like that. And we didn't get that here. So overall, like, you know, $325 for something like this, I think it's okay, but it's not necessarily great. We just reviewed this little Topton M6 and this came with Windows 11 Pro. It was actually about the same price. It has a processor that's not necessarily as fast. However, it also has twice the memory. It has a much larger, like a four times larger SSD. It also has something like two and a half gig ethernet. So it's faster on ethernet. It has Wi-Fi. This didn't come with Wi-Fi. And so like, you know, on one hand, you do get a faster processor with this one. But on the other hand, this one I think is actually a much better value. Although the build quality on the Lenovo is clearly superior. Let's just call that what it is. But the other thing about pricing is not just the value compared to a top 10 unit today, but also the other thing I think is just interesting about pricing is that when you look at eBay today, finding one of these for like $300, even in this exact configuration, which is a pretty low end configuration, is pretty hard to do. And I, I, I guess maybe that's one of the reasons that I always kind of found it hard to review this unit. And the other thing is I just really don't like this one. So, well, let's just get to the hardware and then let's go talk about why I'm not a huge fan of this versus suddenly the other nano PCs that Lenovo has. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice on this chassis, if you see any of these pictures, is that there's all kinds of stuff going on here. Like there's adhesive that's kind of, you know, I tried wiping off, but really unsuccessfully. There was, you know, a lot of adhesive on the bottom here because there was uh, Velcro on the bottom. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But just the fact is that this thing is pretty dirty. And when it originally arrived, it smelled like it had been through a forest fire. I mean, the, the smell of smoke on this thing was just horrendous. And we did get a used unit. That's just something that happens if you don't get a new unit. But I just want to note the fact that that's probably one of the reasons that I wasn't actually a big fan of this at first. It just, it was so pungent. I just couldn't stand it. But let's look at the hardware that we do have. And specifically, let's start with the front of the unit. On the front of the unit, on either side, we have a power button and we also have a headset. I really like the fact that we actually have a real headset port here. I don't know why, I just kind of like that. Now on the USB side, there are three USB ports. The first one is a type C port and that type C port is a 10 gigabit per second port. What I do really like about Lenovo is that they do actually label the fact that this 
this is a 10 gigabit per second, so Gen 2 port. Some other vendors don't actually provide labels. Now these Lenovo units don't have like blue USB ports, but Lenovo does label them. So I kind of feel like that's okay in my book. Just something that when you're looking at this, it may not compute initially because you're like, why is the port not blue or whatever. Uh, they just put the little label on the bottom and I think that's perfectly okay. Now there's another type A port that is a 10 gigabit per second port as well. And then you'll see a third USB port, which is also a type A port, but this is just a USB two port. It's not even a gen one port, like five gigabit per second port. This is a literally a USB port. That's just USB two. And why that matters to me at least is that the top one over here, this is actually the M90N Nano. So this is the Intel version of that. And you're gonna see that instead of a USB two port here, we actually get a USB three and a 10 gigabit per second type A port instead. So you do definitely get some better connectivity even on the front. And when you're gonna see that also on the rear of this unit as well. So so moving to the rear of the unit, we get the Lenovo power adapter. Now, one thing that you can actually do with these is that you can actually power them via USB-C. And so if you wanted to do that, I guess you could. There's also a display port as well as a type C port. That's a 10 gigabit per second port, but it has another little trick because you can actually go run a 4K 60 frames per second display. Although it's UHD, of course, uh, displays that you can run both off of the display port as well as the type C port, but you can actually get dual display outputs out of this little unit. There's a type A, 10 gigabit per second port. And there's also a USB 2 type A port as well. In terms of networking, you get a Realtek NIC. You don't get an Intel NIC on this one because it's an AMD thing, but you do get AMD Dash, but you don't get VPro. So it's okay, but it's definitely not the best solution in terms of networking. And you're gonna see that we also don't have a Wi-Fi nub here. And bringing the M90N Nano back into frame, you can see that we have I guess instead of a USB 2 port on the back, we also have a USB 10 gigabit per second port, so a Gen 2 port. And so that's another, I guess, you know, second port that's better on the Intel version. And then we do get Wi-Fi with our M90N Nano, but on the other hand, it was a configurable option on the M75 and we just didn't get it for our $300. But the Wi-Fi selection that you had in these units wasn't really actually that great. I mean, there was an Intel solution, but that was only AC Wi-Fi. There's a Qualcomm like, really not good solution. You do not want the Qualcomm Wi-Fi in this because I think even only had like Bluetooth 4 rather than Bluetooth 5. So I would just say skip the AC Wi-Fi from Qualcomm on this one. There's also some Realtek units and you could get a either an AC Wi-Fi or I think you could also get a Wi-Fi 6, but it was a Realtek Wi-Fi 6. So um, again, you, you, this is probably a little bit lower end than some of the other units that we're seeing. And a good example of that is this little Topton unit that we just reviewed. That thing even has AX Wi-Fi from Intel. And of course, Part of that is just the generation and like the timing of these units, but I just kind of feel like Lenovo could have done a better job of getting Wi-Fi and like networking solutions in this. And there's one other funny thing that I mentioned, I think in this, which is really, if you look at this unit, you may have seen it recently because you'll have seen this unit with a big Velcro blotch on the bottom. And you're gonna notice that that's not there, but we have a little bit of residue. So something that was kind of fun is that the previous owner of this actually had a big black piece of Velcro that was kind of on the bottom of this unit. And I don't know, I guess this is how they mount mounted it because this is a pretty light unit. And I could totally see that being a great option. I think there are also Visa and also DIN mounting options for this, but Velcro super easy to go use. And I can totally see why you would do it. However, you're gonna notice that there's this big white patch and that's actually like all the like regulatory label and all that kind of stuff that was on the bottom here. And so when I pulled the Velcro off, the regulatory label came off with it and I basically can't separate the two, the Velcro and the regulatory label. So you're not gonna see that on the bottom because um, well, it's uh, it's stuck here and I don't, I don't know how to fix that. Now let's transition to our internal hardware overview. And if you pop the top off, it's actually pretty easy, it just pops off, but you really can't service anything there. And that's really interesting because these units basically came with eight gigabytes of DDR4 2400 memory. You couldn't get 16 gigabytes because, well, you got eight gigabytes. That's what you got. You didn't get any more. And frankly, I think that that's a big miss from Lenovo. If you look at the Dell units, which are their USFF Optiplexes, they actually have upgradable memory. And I think that is a big benefit on something like this little Lenovo platform. This is not a fanless unit, although we did review the M75N Nano IoT version, which was a fanless unit. And so for, I think for the embedded market, I can totally see why you'd want soldered memory that's fixed. But on this kind of unit where you do have a fan, I mean, it's not really an embedded part. So I just don't like the idea of having soldered memory on a little system like this because you can't upgrade it. And also under here, we had our AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 33, 
3500U processor. There was also a Ryzen 5 Pro 3500U, but we only had the Ryzen 3 because that's all we could get at the time. The three big differences between those two CPUs is that the Ryzen 3 Pro only had four cores, four threads. So this is one of the few AMD CPUs that actually doesn't have you know two threads per core. And so that's just kind of a bummer, right? The Ryzen 5 actually does have that. So you get four cores, eight threads, which I think is a little bit better. You also get a little bit more in terms of a turbo clock on the Ryzen 5. And then the other thing is that you go from Vega 6 graphics in the Ryzen 3 to Vega 8 graphics in the Ryzen 5. Now, the cool thing is that that Vega graphics is actually DirectX 12 GPU. GPU, so that's nice. Although this is kind of like an older generation of IP, both for cores as well as for the, you know, GPU IP. So just, just I would keep my my expectations very tempered. Also, these are only 15 watt TDP parts, so they're not the full 35 watts that we see in kind of mainstream segments. So if you compare these to the Project Tiny Mean Micronodes, these just don't have as much thermal headroom to be able to you know, really clock up. And so you do get less performance in these versus tiny mini micro notes. Okay, now opening up the bottom of the unit, it just, you take one screw out and then it just kind of pops off. You have to watch because you can actually break off some of these little black plastic tabs on the chassis. Uh, I'm not gonna say that I've done that, but just uh, watch out because you totally can. And inside you're gonna see that basically you get an array of three slots with which you can use to customize this unit. Now you can see that we get one M.2 for our SSD and you can see we have a little tiny 128 gig SSD, which is okay, I guess it's not great, but that's what it is. And then there's another slot and that other slot, you can actually have an M.2 SATA SSD or you can have a NVMe SSD, but you only get PCIe Gen 3 by two in that other slot. So you probably for most of your storage, you're gonna to wanna to use the by four, that's the main slot, but you can actually add another drive if you want to. That is a little bit different than a lot of the Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes, where especially if you have like a 35 watt TDP CPU and you don't have like a GPU, you can actually get a two and a half inch drive. Plus you can nowadays get a lot of units that actually have two M.2 NVMe by four SSDs, and even some that support PCIe Gen 4. So just to me, I think that, you know, this is an older system, so I wouldn't necessarily expect PCIe Gen 4 support. But on the other hand, I do kind of wish that there was a little bit more robust configuration options, because again, you can't customize the CPU, you can't customize the memory. And so that's what it is. And speaking of customizing the CPU, this one, this is a soldered CPU. So that basically means that, you know, you can't really take this CPU off of the motherboard. We did have a lot of folks that had feedback when we did the piece on Lenovo PSB locking its Ryzen chips um, in the tiny mini micro one liter PCs. But this one, I don't really see an issue because if you're gonna solder a CPU onto a motherboard, that's not really a easily replaceable part. So I don't really have an issue with the idea of vendor locking in that case. So looking at performance, there are a couple of things I just kind of really quick want to talk about. First off, compared to the M90N Nano that we had, that had a Core i5-8365U, and this Ryzen 3 Pro is pretty darn similar to that. They, they, you know, just across, if you did a bunch of benchmarks, there'd be a couple that probably AMD would be ahead, quite a few that Intel would be slightly ahead, but they're gonna be really close. So to me, I would say that the like that Core i5 and this Ryzen 3 Pro are probably about equivalent. And so I would just kind of say that, you know, somebody may say like one is faster, but realistically they're they're pretty darn close. Now these are definitely faster than the Jasper Lake Atoms. And if you're kind of looking at a 35 watt TDP, you'd be looking at something like maybe a core i5 6500T would probably be in about the ballpark of these processors. And so that's kind of the family that these things kind of live in. Now, if you saw, we actually did a piece on this, which is the M75N IoT. And this is the fanless embedded version, but this also has a very slow, like Athlon silver processor. It's only a six watt processor, so that's awesome. But this thing is super slow. So you definitely don't get that with the Ryzen, you know, three, 3300U, it's definitely a good enough processor to give you a decent desktop experience. And that's also kind of why I was bummed that this didn't come with Windows. Now, over the last year or so, what I have noticed is that that not having Windows is actually quite common for these. So we've basically been looking at listings for quite a while and see maybe if we can get a better one that's you know around the same price so we could do a review on that. And frankly, just most of these units seem like they're actually being shipped as kind of like wired thin clients 
rather than you know having all the features that we actually had when we did our M90N review. Now, I will say that we did do two because William did the first one and then we did our Project Tiny Mini Micro one. So we have both of those, although we only have the video for the Tiny Mini Micro one, not the first one. We'll link both of those in the description. Okay. So let's talk about power consumption because that's always a big one. Now we did get a 65 watt power adapter with this. Again, it was used, so who knows if that was even the right one. But also the one that we should definitely talk about is idle power consumption. Idle power consumption was only eight watts in this, which I thought was absolutely phenomenal. It was ever so slightly lower than the nine watts that we saw on the M90N Nano, the Intel version of this. Now, when we talk about maximum power consumption, we only saw 42 watts, which was actually quite a bit less than the Intel solution. And I was surprised that the Delta was actually that big, but that's kind of what it was. The other side too, though, is of course, we do have a smaller, lower performance SSD. And also we don't have Wi-Fi in this, so that might be the you know, reason that we are seeing lower power consumption. At the same time, we also nowadays especially have seen a gap between the AMD and Intel units in terms of maximum power consumption with a given like TDP on the processor. So I don't necessarily know if this is an anomaly, but that's just what we saw. And the power consumption actually in this is not too bad. And as long as you're below something like, you know, maybe like 30, 40%, 50%, uh, utilization on that CPU and you're not really like just banging that CPU, you're not really gonna hear this too much. It makes a little tiny whine, but it's not, not that loud. If you are like trying to go and do some kind of like stress testing or something like that, you're definitely gonna hear this unit because the fan's gonna have to go spin up when you're, especially when you're you know, using over like say 35, 40 watts, like it's definitely going to be spinning up and it's gonna start getting a little bit loud. But for, I think for most usage, you're probably not gonna really have that high of utilization. So I don't necessarily think that this thing is gonna be too loud. So let's get to our key lessons learned. And I think one of the big things that's changed since we did the last three units and when we've done this unit is just the fact that we've done way more Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes. I mean, we've done, I think like maybe four dozen or so Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes. We've done over a dozen, probably getting closer to 20 or so of the STH Mini PCs already. And we have a whole, you know, a whole bunch of these things that are actually still in progress. And these are all DDR4 generation systems, right? And so I've seen a bunch of these systems and this one is not my favorite. The thing I do like about the system clearly is the fact that it's smaller. It's much smaller than the one liter PCs from Lenovo, like the tiny series. But to go from that one liter size to this third of a liter size and get easy Velcro mounting, which is definitely a plus, I actually think that you're giving up a lot. These do use less power, which is also good. But on the other hand, maybe you just get a bigger CPU and just don't run it as high of a utilization number. And at that point, well, the power consumption savings really aren't that much. And what's the trade-off for, I guess, getting rid of all that extra space, which is really not, it's like two thirds of a liter. I guess the trade-offs are, you get soldered memory, which I don't like. I much prefer to have 16 gigabytes in the system. And a lot of the tiny mini micro nodes now, we just deploy with 64 gigs because it's not really that much more expensive. And usually we're RAM limited rather than CPU limited. And so having only eight gigabytes is kind of a total bummer, right? The SSD situation is okay, but you're not getting like two PCIe Gen 3 by four lanes, one of them's only by two. And so that's kind of a bummer. We also had pretty limited Wi-Fi options in this, which wasn't great. We actually didn't have Wi-Fi in ours. And a lot of the units that you would purchase don't also have Wi-Fi. And this little Topton unit is definitely a newer unit. The quality is nowhere near as good as this Lenovo. I mean, this is a plasticky, cheapo feeling chassis and I can easily feel the difference in weight in my hands between the two. But at the same time, I kind of like the fact that this has a lot more features. It just feel like I got a lot more with this unit than the Lenovo unit at this price range. You can get some Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes with higher end CPUs or a little bit newer CPUs and you know, new features, more expandability, all that kind of stuff. If you're willing to go from you know this to that one liter chassis, you can get a lot more I think for your buck by getting those rather than this unit. So what was interesting is I didn't actually remember doing the video for the M90N Nano, which is this one over here. I had forgotten that I came away disappointed from from the M90N Nano. And well, I kind of feel the same way about the M75N Nano. Um, I, I just kind of feel disappointed. I just feel like they're just such better options with really not that much of a trade-off. So just to me, 
I know a lot of people ask about this M75, and especially since we did the IoT version, the IoT version for six watt embedded part, it's something totally different. You know, in the one liter PC segment, I think that Dell is nowhere near as good as Lenovo. Like the Optiplex 7090s are just, um, you know, nowhere near as good as the HP and Lenovo units these days. But I think that the actually the Dell Optiplex 7070 USFF is actually a better platform than this Lenovo one. Here's the deal. I'm gonna just say it skip this one and get something else, don't get this one. And Lenovo, even though you don't provide these units for us to review, I know you watch the videos because we do get a lot of North Carolina uh, readers from a very certain area. And I'm just gonna say this, this has the potential to be a very good unit, but you made a couple missteps here, like soldering the memory and stuff like that, which I think could be rectified in a newer version. In fact, a newer version of this could be really cool, but you need to kind of learn from some of these items. On the embedded part, solder memory, totally get it, but not in this little unit. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we do more Project Tiny Mini Micro and also STH Mini PC series systems. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.